What benefits will come about as a result of the package holiday directive? Well, um, the first question about this directive was uh, should we go ahead with um, package travel directive or leave it like it is and actually the directive might even fade away because people are making their their packages, their holidays by their own and it's outdated and uh, the time is over and that's it. So this one was the first question. Then of course European level or national level. So the both questions uh, already have strong answers because um, we need this, this uh, legislative coverage. Uh, and especially now because uh, when, uh, for example, the, the company is, is uh, in insolvency or bankrupted or this one might happen all of a sudden in the, in the summer or at least without consumers to, to know about this, uh, people are simply fled somewhere far away from home. So that's why at the end, after many discussions, we decided that we should cover this dynamic uh, independent packaging. And now we need to discuss with uh, businesses as well, because we have here, of course, one, one, one issue to balance. Uh, this is costly for business, of course. Uh, we don't want to, to pass uh, at the end this improvement of protection as a cost only on consumers. I think that it's quite normal to convince businesses that if the consumers uh, trust them, this one will be better for them and uh, then we will start to legislate but in my in my best uh, calculations I don't believe that before two years we will have this directive um, the very first time I came here uh, it was uh, two, two years ago actually and I booked a hotel room in a, through a website that was established in Ireland and I was at that time uh, I booked the first time and it was uh, unsuccessful so I was actually uh, charged twice and uh, the trader refused to, uh, to, to, to provide me with uh, the, the refund. So I had to contact the ECC in France that mm -hmm. and they contacted the colleagues here and everything was sorted. And consumers are often unaware of their rights and for example if, if they purchase something from a company and there's an issue with the item that they've purchased and they approach the company and the, and the company tells them oh under EU legislation you aren't entitled to your money back which actually is false then more often than not the consumer will actually believe the company will take them at face value and will not actually pursue the issue any further and just end up very frustrated but believe the consumer or believe the trader and, and it does often happen. If we manage for the future to make kind of a, a very short announcement at the point of sale that you have your two -year consumer guarantee. rights, two-year guarantee, um, well, fair contract terms, um, complain where to complain uh, basic basic rights but very important maybe we will start to be more yes. more self-confident